Hello and welcome to another video review and the first normal review of the year. Today we're looking at Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 3 Full Burst for PC, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3. This is a 3D fighting game developed by CyberConnect2 and published by Bandai Namco back in 2013. And it's actually the first game in the Ultimate Ninja Storm series, or really the Ultimate Ninja series at all, to be released on PC. And Ultimate Ninja Storm Revolution is the second one to be on PC. And it seems like this is going to be a pretty normal thing from here on out. It's always nice to see more fighting games come to PC. But then you have questions, I'm sure. First of them being, What the hell are you doing, DW? Why are you reviewing a Naruto game? Naruto is for the weeboos, right? Uh, not really. It has its moments. It's not an amazing series by any stretch of the imagination. But it actually makes some pretty good fodder for a fighting game, if you really think about it. You have a large cast of characters that have wildly different fighting styles and lots of really cool flashy moves that seem to be incredibly powerful and such like that. So, really it's great fodder for a fighting game. And the question here really becomes, is this the kind of game where only fans of the source material are actually going to get anything out of it? Or is it an enjoyable game in and of itself regardless of its source material? Well, as far as the presentation goes, there's really only two major hurdles to overcome. The first of them is that this is a console port, and it's not exactly the best console port out there. There weren't any major glaring issues with it. It has a 30 frames per second cap, which you can live with, but it's not really that great. At least it runs at that 30 frames per second the entire time you're playing. There's absolutely zero frame drops in this thing. It runs extremely well. And things like the menus not being designed around a mouse, where you had to use the keyboard, or if you have a gamepad, then you can use that. Things like that. And so, those are really more annoyances in this game than anything else. If you don't have a gamepad, I can see that being a deal breaker, but for the most part, as far as the presentation goes, it's fine. You can live with it. The other major hurdle to overcome is that this thing is styled after an anime, which is also very, very flashy and has a lot of crazy looking moves and things like that. So what you get here is anime style visuals with lots of extremely flashy, over the top, elaborate animations, which are very, very smooth and fluid, but for some people they might wear thin after a while. Because let's face it, we're talking about things that are kind of completely ridiculous here. Things like calling in meteors to strike your foe, which is both awesome and kind of insane at the same time. And there's some things that have issues with suspension of disbelief, like the meteor strike, for example, which you know would cause a massive crater, and yet when it's over, the enemy's just sitting there in the arena that you were fighting in to begin with, and nothing around you is destroyed. Perhaps that's something they can fix in a sequel, but they don't have it here. And there is some issue with the quality of the visuals, mostly with regards to some jagged edges due to the lack of anti-aliasing, because it's, again, a console port and there aren't that many graphics options. And the other issue being the lip syncing, which, if you're using the Japanese vocals, is perfectly fine for the most part. It fits pretty well. But should you decide to use the English voiceovers, although I couldn't possibly imagine why you would want to do that, because the English voiceover is pretty terrible, the lip syncing does not match at all, to the point where it's actually annoying rather than funny. See, kung fu movies having ridiculous looking lip syncing is often funny. In this case, it's just kind of annoying. So... That's really the only major issues with the visuals. Because everything else is pretty well detailed and looks fine. They really did capture the look of the anime very well. And then you move to the sound design. I've already mentioned the voiceovers, where the Japanese voiceovers are just much, much better than the English. And they do give you the option to switch between them. Now, I obviously have the North American version of the game, which means that I get access to English and Japanese. I don't know how the voice acting is in other languages. 
or if it's even available in other languages. So can't say anything there. But really, with anime, most people know that you either watch it with the Japanese voiceovers and subtitles, or in some very, very rare cases, you will watch the English dub, like, say, Cowboy Bebop. Naruto is not that case. Even the anime has pretty terrible voiceovers half the time. So, that's just something you kind of know going into it, at least. The sound effects are all very beefy, which is very nice. You get a lot of really cool uh, explosion sound effects with regards to a lot of the powers and things like that. Uh, the fighting is suitably uh, hard-hitting for the most part, although sometimes we are smacking people around and you would expect it to have more hard-hitting sound effects. But again, this is an anime-style game we're talking about here, so it's using anime-style sound effects. It works fine, but for some people, that's not going to really work all that well. And then there's the music. I honestly don't really remember much of the music. It's okay, and in-game it can get pretty decent, but for the most part, it's almost too serene. Now, when you're in the story mode and there's some really heated moments, they do up the ante with it, but when you're actually just doing normal fighting and such, with, say, the versus or tournament mode or something like that, it's pretty serene and kind of odd, because you're doing all these crazy flashy moves and beating the living crap out of other people, and here's this rather nice, pleasant music. Or at least on some stages. Others, it's not so much. But they could have done a better job with the music. That's really on the only major issue with the sound design. But obviously what really matter here are the story and the gameplay, and the story in this is really the story of the anime. Although it's taking one particular subset. It starts at the end of the uh, Pain arc and goes all the way up to the beginning of the Great Shinobi War that's currently what's going on in the anime as I'm making this video anyway. And it's a pretty comprehensive retelling of what happened in that particular section of the anime, only without most of the filler crap. It does take some liberties here and there, it certainly doesn't have the exact same dialogue that you saw in the anime and the manga, it certainly doesn't have the exact same panels as the manga or the exact same animations as the uh, anime. They did take quite a few liberties with that sort of thing to make it more conducive to the gameplay and to the feel they were going for. And it works pretty well. Oddly enough, this ends up being a better adaptation of the manga than the anime does half the time. And that's mostly because the anime is full of just complete garbage. Whereas this one really tries to cut things down to make it more palatable to actually being a game. Does that mean you lose some of the uh, wider things going on? Yes, but that narrower focus actually helps things out in the long run. Now, fans of the anime and manga will feel right at home with the plot, but for those of you who aren't fans, or just have no clue about anything related to it, you'll find yourselves like fish out of water. You're going to feel really uncomfortable because nobody is explained, None of the plot points leading up to it are explained, except in the Ninja World timeline. And even then, they're not really explained all that well. You have to actually go looking for things to actually complete the Ninja World timeline. And so what you have there is these series of cutscenes, and oh, this game is full of cutscenes. Tons of them, everywhere. Luckily, you can skip most of them, but... It's a series of cutscenes, a series of fights that elaborate on the plot a bit. With regards to what happened before this thing, uh, the story in this begins, you have to go into the Ninja World timeline and go to the segments prior to the prologue in order to find out what kind of happened there and fill you in it, at least to some degree, on what's going on. Because otherwise you're going to be pretty lost. And it doesn't really do a good job of bringing you up to speed. It pretty much assumes that you've actually seen the anime or read the manga up to the point where it's actually taking place. And so, it really does focus more on being a game than 
filling you in on the plot and everything like that. Not to say that the plot isn't presented decently, it is, but it's done in a way where really only fans of the series or just people who know what's going on in the series will really get the most out of it. That said, what you don't have to be a fan of the series or a follower of the series to actually understand is the gameplay. And the gameplay is really varied in this thing. Obviously in the story mode there's your typical battles that you've been seeing up to this point. But there's also things like mob battles where it's basically turning the game into a brawler and it's actually a pretty competent brawler at that where you have to take on groups of enemies and they have lower health than what you would normally fight but there's a bunch of them and so you have to deal with them and once you've taken a certain enemy down to a certain amount of health you can tap the A button on the 360 gamepad and you'll jump over to the next enemy and things like that so you'll end up having some pretty large combos and some really flashy moves once you get the mini bosses of those particular areas down to a certain amount of health a an icon will appear above them and then you can tap that button when you're up next to them and finish them off you also get access to burst attacks once your uh, gauge builds up all the way from building up combo and once it's filled up you can tap uh, YYB again on the 360 pack because that's what I've got and it will activate the burst attack mode where you just have to tap the button that's displayed on the screen in a very short amount of time in order to basically chain together a finishing combo for all these different uh, mob enemies. Eventually you'll also fight stronger mini bosses that are really more substantial characters in the series and have more powerful abilities than what you see in this video. But they do play pretty much the same with regards to what you're doing. You're still just beating the crap out of a bunch of lesser enemies and building up burst attack combos, things like that. But that's actually only certain parts of the game. Other parts of the game you're running around on an overworld and finding shops where you can buy items and these items can be anything from uh, increasing your attack power briefly or lowering the enemy's attack power to healing yourself, to restoring your chakra, which if you don't know what that is in this thing, it's basically your mana. So it's what you use to power up your attacks and things like that. And so there's a variety of these items that are available to you to do what you really want to with them. And so that lends a more strategic aspect to the gameplay where you actually have some preparation to do beforehand because you have the legend items and you have the hero items. The hero items tend to be the ones that are more useful. The legend items have more advanced effects so to speak. And at certain parts in the game you'll come across something called ultimate decision where it splits off into two different paths. One of them is Legend, the other one is Hero. These each earn you points toward leveling up your specific uh, item set. Now, you start off with barely any items available to you and barely any slots to actually throw items into. As you level up your Hero and your Legend uh, item slots, the slots that you can have will increase as well as the number of items that you can have in those slots as well as the type of items that you can use. Obviously the higher level you have in that particular slot type the uh, more powerful the effects are going to be. For example in the hero track you start off with a very very weak healing potion. Well once you've leveled that up a bit you get access to a better healing potion and you level it up some more and you get access to an even better healing potion so on and so forth as you're going through the world you're going to find recipes and blueprints and such to expand the amount of items that you can actually purchase in the uh, stores you earn the money just by doing all sorts of different things throughout the game fighting enemies completing side quests things like that or just wandering around and finding it just sitting around 
So you'll pretty much be swimming in money by the end of the game. You can also spend this money to unlock things like ninja info cards and tiles and such for your online info card. As well as things like uh, cosmetic items like substitution logs where uh, substitution is one of the uh, things you can do in the game and what they basically do with this particular technique is they substitute themselves for an inanimate object at the last second when they're getting hit and so they pop up behind the enemy and this other object pops up right in front where the person was striking now what you start with is a log and of course as you earn money you get the option to buy different things instead of the log and some of those are pretty silly and in fact most of them are pretty silly the whole substitution jutsu idea is pretty silly in general but they pretty much embrace how ridiculous this game can get things like the costume selections available which you either earn by going through the story mode and just getting to a certain point in the story or by earning a certain amount of money Luckily enough, the amount of money you earn is actually independent of the amount of money you currently have. So, let's say that a character takes 900,000 of Yo to unlock and you only have 800,000 of Yo right now. Well, that doesn't necessarily matter because as long as you have earned 900,000 of Yo over the course of playing the game, regardless of how much you've spent, you will unlock that character. So that's actually pretty nice. The game rewards you for continuing to play by giving you a wide variety of characters to play as. There are 81 playable characters in this game, along with 7 uh, support-only characters, where they only pop in during the team battles. They're only selectable during that, as the support characters that will just hop in, do an attack, or uh, do a, a defense action or something like that, and then hop back out. Whereas everybody else is a straight up playable character. And some of them have wildly different playstyles. Now, what you're seeing in this video is mostly me playing as characters that I'm comfortable playing with. And that's simply because their playstyles fit more how I play the game. There's other characters like, say, Conqueror, who has puppets. And the puppets actually control individually from him and it's really awkward. I never got used to it, so I don't play as Conqueror. But it's an interesting playstyle, and it's wildly different from a lot of the other characters. Some of the characters are just projectile spammers, where that's pretty much all they can do. And so that adds some challenge to the game, where you have to actually get in close if you're playing as a certain other kind of character to be able to do anything. Other characters are more defensive, like Hinata, or Pain, actually. Where most of their attacks are done very, very close, and they have good attacks that will actually affect all directions around them in a sort of defensive style. And so, you have this wide variety of characters to play as, and a pretty big variety of costumes for them. Full Burst includes all of the DLC costumes. And so, not only do you have costumes that you would expect these characters to have if you've seen the series in any respect, but they'll also have some silly costumes, like a cowboy outfit for Naruto, because why not? Things like that, that are just there to be a bit different and just have some fun with the game. Again, it pretty much embraces how ridiculous it is. Now, I mentioned that there is a team battle mode. You can either play solo as one character versus another character, or you can play as a team of up to three against another team of up to three. You have your main fighter, and that's who you control throughout the entirety of the match, but you also have two support characters, or at least up to two support characters. You can choose one if you want, or none if you want. And these characters can hop in to give you some quick support. Some of them, again, give you some defensive traits, some of them give you offensive traits, but it's sort of a tag team kind of thing. And you can actually build up a team meter as you're uh, fighting as these characters and you continue to use them. 
and eventually you unlock the ability to do the ultimate team jutsu as opposed to just the ultimate jutsu that you get as any character. Every single character in this game has an ultimate jutsu. Well, with the team jutsu, it goes one step further and implements whatever the uh, support characters are going to do. They'll just beat the crap out of the opponent for a while and then you'll finish them off with the ultimate jutsu that your character has. Obviously the ultimate jutsu does a lot of damage and you actually get bonus points if you manage to finish a match with an ultimate jutsu. You also get one for just finishing it with a normal ninjutsu or in awakened state where the condition is different for each character. Some of them require you to get down to a certain amount of health in order to be able to activate it. Others can just activate it any time. But in this awakened state, you do more damage, you uh, have an easier time breaking through defenses, things like that. And sometimes that gets kind of ridiculous and can even change up how your uh, ninjutsu works. For example, Naruto can go into uh, Tail Beast Chakra mode. And instead of doing his normal Rasengan, which is just basically a thing where he runs up and smacks a guy in the face with an energy ball. Well now, his uh, jutsu is some wild pattern where he just jumps around all the place like a bullet and it does a completely different thing and so you, you have a pretty interesting variety of moves available and it's mostly with the same control scheme I mean all of your button combinations are pretty much the same for every character but what happens with these characters is going to vary pretty wildly between the various characters and so what you have here is a very easy to pick up, very easy to learn game. But with a very large amount of variety in how you actually play it. And you can find a playstyle that suits you. Because there's 81 characters here. You're bound to found, find one or two that you actually like. And so that adds quite a bit of replay value to the game. Just playing as the different characters, figuring out what works, what doesn't work. None of the characters are really underpowered or overpowered. Well, except for a couple of them that spam projectiles just because that's annoying as hell. But you can even get beyond that. So, that certainly does help. There, there's not really any one character that always wins no matter what. So, that adds some balancing to the game that you don't even see in a lot of current fighting games that are more popular than this. And speaking of variety, there's a large amount of game modes here too. You have your basic versus mode, which can either be a team battle or a single battle, as well as tournament mode, where there's three different kinds of tournaments that you can choose, or one of them's just your basic tournament, and then other ones fulfill different uh, conditions when you're actually playing. And these tournaments can be for either four or eight players, and you can choose to either play them solo or with up to the maximum amount of players. If you really want to, you can play with up to seven other people on the same machine, and it will work. I'm pretty sure you just have to swap out the controller, but I've never tried it like that. But it's an interesting idea. And then, of course, there's online play, which, although it's extremely laggy in my experience, it's pretty much just versus mode. I can see this game being a lot more fun on a local machine, because then you don't have the lag problem. It was pretty much unplayable for me when I went online. So I didn't really bother much with that. And that's kind of a shame, actually, because, let's face it, if you don't have your... A PC hooked up to a TV and a bunch of controllers available, you can't really do much with something like this. And so online play is really more of a must on PC than it is on console. I don't know how it is on console, I haven't played it on that. But on PC it's really really laggy and that just kills the experience. While we're on the topic of things that are negative about this game, I do want to mention a couple of things that kind of drive me crazy. The first of them is that this game has a ton of cutscenes, as I've mentioned, 
but some of them aren't skippable and instead have a bunch of quick time events in them. This is only during story mode. And these quick time events will gain you stars, which will work toward getting secret factors. Which is basically just an additional cutscene. And so... That gets kind of annoying when you're just in the middle of something and then, oh, well, here's an unskippable cutscene that you have to mash buttons in order to actually do well on. Now, I've never actually just sat around and not actually pressed the buttons, but I'm pretty sure you could get away with not doing it. So, it's kind of ridiculous how they decided to throw so many cutscenes in there and then just make some of them unskippable. And that gets pretty annoying. I don't like unskippable cutscenes, and I have never liked quick time events. Ever. In any game. And most people don't like quick time events. They're just kind of annoying. So, that can get rather tiresome. Luckily, they don't do that all that much. It's usually only during the final boss fight of a particular chapter. And so, they do pace the game well enough where the quick time events don't just destroy the experience. They don't overuse them to the point where they're ridiculous. Now related to these quick time events are things called secret actions, which will occasionally pop up in story mode battles, where it's a special condition that has to be fulfilled, and it can be all sorts of different things. You have to dodge at a certain specific time in the fight or a certain attack. You have to act activate your ninjutsu at the same time as their ninjutsu, something like that. Some kind of arbitrary condition that fulfills something that actually happened in the anime or the manga. And so they decided to incorporate it into the gameplay here. You don't have to do these secret actions, but they usually pop up with a very short quick time event and then give you a, another flashy cutscene where you just kind of smash them into the ground or something. Luckily those secret actions are only in certain cases again. Usually again during the final boss fight of a given chapter. Just to spice things up a bit. But it's worth noting that the only real other issue I have with this game is that the final boss fight is just BS. Because gauntlet fights. I hate those. It doesn't matter what it's in, I hate gauntlets. Where you basically have to fight multiple enemies that can be really powerful all at the same time, and you have a very limited amount of health to go through. You can't restore your health, and you have to go through pretty much the entire fight all over again if you manage to fail at any one point. That's just annoying. I've hated that in every game it's ever been in. And this one's no exception. But it's worth noting that those are really the only major issues I have with this game. They're fairly negligible in the long run. It's actually incredibly surprising that this game is as fun as it is. Because it's not a particularly complex game. I mean, yes, you have the complexities of various item combinations and things like that. But the mechanics themselves are very simple. And with something this easy to pick up and play, you would expect it to be really shallow and very, very quick to lose steam. And yes, in some ways it is a pretty shallow game. It's very flashy, it's ornate, there's a lot of really, really big, crazy moves going on that are just really fun to watch. But that's the thing. The game's fun. It doesn't try to be anything else. It's not trying to be something profound. It's not trying to be some be-all, end-all game. It's trying to be a fun, flashy game that captures the ridiculousness of the series. And it actually succeeds brilliantly at that, and ends up being a really fun game as a result. I can easily see this being a really fun party game, where you just get a few buddies together, and you don't want anything really serious. You're not going to go into try-hard mode, so to speak. And you're just like, well, let's throw this in there and have some fun. Obviously, only fans of the series are really going to get the most out of this thing. But even if you're not a fan of it, you can get quite a lot out of this thing. It's a big, dumb fighting game, 
that manages to do 3D fairly well, apart from some camera angle issues here and there, where you'll go careening off to the side because the angle was weird and you just didn't see it. But it usually corrects itself pretty well. And it manages to avoid certain pitfalls that you would expect from licensed games. It's actually pretty high quality. And even though it's a big, dumb fighting game, it's a lot of fun to play. I give it a 3.5 out of 5. Thanks for watching.